Hi everybody and welcome again to Z-Code Sports System. Here we developed automated systems to help you win every single time. It doesn't matter what sport you're betting on, we have you covered. Before we get into some Major League Baseball action for July the 10th, I want to invite you to join so you will have access to the VIP Club section, which has all the tools to help you make your picks. So we have a full slate of action here as we're getting very close to the All-Star break and teams are really starting to heat up vying for uh, wild card spots as we head into the second half of the season. So let's take a look at some of the games here. Uh, we will take a look at six of them in the full slate of action. So we're going to scroll down through here to the first game. You can see there's a lot of games. First game we want to look at here for this weekend is the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Milwaukee Brewers. In this NL Central battle, the Brewers host the Pirates. You can see that both teams are averaged down at the moment. The Brewers have lost their last two and are 3-3 three and three over their last six, while the Pirates are coming off of a loss and they are also 3-3 three and three over their last six games. Jose Quintana is scheduled to pitch for the Pirates versus Eric Lauer for the Brewers. You can see here Quintana is 2-4 and four with a 3.33 ERA and has been a nice bet at plus $54. While Lauer is 6-3 with a 3.84 ERA, he is even a better bet at plus $182. If you look at the over-under, the Pirates have been involved in games over the line in two out of the last four, while the Brewers in three out of the last six. The score prediction has the Brewers by a 3-1 score with 51% confidence, so it's looking like a pitcher's duel if you will follow the score predictor. On the power ranking indicator, you see here that Pittsburgh is at plus 17. You see the Brewers were at 26, and they dropped over the last... Well, this only goes to the 6th, so I don't know what it is now as of today as I'm doing this video, which is 8th, but they dropped to plus 13. If you look at the volatility oscillator, the stability factor, you can see that the Pirates have been much more consistently performing with regard to their favorite underdog status at plus 18 compared to plus 8. In the end, I like the Brewers in this one, and I like it to be a low-scoring game. So take the Brewers and under the line. The Philadelphia Phillies and the St. Louis Cardinals. The Phillies are coming off of a win, and they are 4-2 and two over their last six. They are average up, while the Cardinals have been struggling a bit. They are 2-4 uh, two and four over their last six, and they are coming off of a 3-2 win over Atlanta. Christopher Sanchez is scheduled to pitch for the Phillies versus Andre Pallante for the Cardinals. You see Sanchez is 1-1 one one with a 3.48 ERA and is a nice bet at plus $61, while Pallante, although his ERA is solid at 3.03, .03, he is only 2-4 and, and he has been a very poor bet at minus $331. If you look at the over-under in this game, you see the Phillies have been involved in games over the line in just two out of the last six, as well as the Cardinals. So this is a good indication that this game would probably be a low-scoring game under the line. The score prediction has a Phillies by a 6-4 margin, or excuse me, 6-5 margin, with about 57% level of confidence in the prediction. If you go to the power ranks indicator, look at the Cardinals here. They were at plus 20 just a few days ago, and they have dipped considerably to plus 3 because of their uh, recent poor play. And the Phillies have been up and down. You can see they have been up as high as plus 26 back on June the 28th. Got back up to plus 26 on July 2nd and got to plus 27, and now they are sitting at plus 21. The stability factor, this is one thing that the Phillies have not been, is stable. They have not been consistently performing. doesn't mean they're playing poorly. They're right in the wild card chase, but it means that if they've been favorites, maybe they've been losing. If they're underdogs, maybe they've been winning. So you just never know with this team. While the Cardinals are at plus 21, they've been very consistent. In the end, I think I like the Phillies in this one, but I will take them in a game under the line. Next game is Houston and Oakland. In this AL West showdown, the Astros travel to Houston. You can see Houston is burning hot at the moment. They are 5-1 and one over their last six. If I can get this to come up. There we go. 5-1 and one over their last six. All the A's are averaged down, and they are 3-3 three and three over their last six. The pitching matchup is Jake Odorizzi for... Houston, and you see Oakland has not yet named their starter. But Arizzi is 3-2 and two with a 4.04 ERA and has been a moderately good bet at plus $13. In the power ranking indicator, you can see that both teams are at plus 19, but got there in different ways. Houston was at 29. They dipped to 19. Now, Oakland was down to 1 just a few days ago, and they have 
skyrocketed up to plus 19. The teams have been trending on opposite sides of the over-under line. You see the Astros have been involved in games over the line in five out of the last six, while Oakland has been involved in games under the line in five out of the last six. So in that case, I would avoid the over-under. If you want to look at the score predictor, you see that Houston is picked by a 6 to nothing score with a confidence in prediction of 65%. The volatility oscillator shows that both teams have been very, very consistently performing with regard to their favorite underdog status. Pretty much an upward trend for both teams all year, plus 25 to plus 21. In the end, I like the Astros, but I would avoid the over-under bet. Chicago and the Los Angeles Dodgers. Here's another very good matchup. The Cubs entered the game average down. They're coming off of a loss, and they are 3-3 three and three over their last six. You see the loss was to the Dodgers, 5-3. to three. The Dodgers are burning hot. They are winners of five out of their last six games. Neither team has named their starting pitcher as of yet. If you look at the over-under, the Cubs have been involved in games over the line in two out of the last six, while the Dodgers have been involved in games over the line in three out of their last six. The score predictor has the Dodgers by an 8-3 margin with about 61% level of confidence. Now, the line has not yet been set, so whether an 8-3 score would be over or under the line, we don't know it as of now. Um, in the power ranking indicator, you can see that the Dodgers were at plus 16 back on July 4th, and they have increased to plus 26, while the Cubs have also went up from plus 16 to plus 23. Take a look at the stability factor. Are they consistently performing with regards to their favorite underdog stats? Well, you see the Cubs have not. They are just zero. And really, um, if you look back to early in the season, they have not been higher than just barely over the line, maybe up to like, what, plus three? So they've not been consistent all year with regard to their favorite underdog status. While the Dodgers have been, they are plus 23. In the end, I like this to be a Dodgers win. And I think this one will be a lower scoring game. So I'm going to go Dodgers under the line. The next game I want to look at is the Blue Jays and the Mariners. Toronto comes into play dead status. They have lost five out of their last six. While the Mariners on the opposite side of the spectrum, they have won five out of their last six. And they are burning hot. Neither team has named their starting pitcher as of yet. If you look at the power ranking indicator, it should not be much of a surprise here. Seattle is up at plus 24 because of their recent hot streak, and Toronto is all the way down here at plus 2 because of their poor play as of late. The score predictor looks like they like Seattle in a blowout 9-2 with confidence of, in prediction of about 55%. If you look at the over-under, you can see that Toronto has been involved in games over the line in 3 out of their last 5, and Seattle in 3 out of their last 6, but in each of the last 3. Um, let's take a look here at the volatility oscillator, the stability factor, which is always a nice thing to look at. Seattle is up and down. They were up at plus 14, and then they dipped, dipped, went up again. Now they dipped again, and they are at plus 13 again right now. So they have been a little bit inconsistent as of late with regard to their favorite underdog stats. Overall for the season, relatively consistent. You can see Toronto, again, inconsistent as well. They were at plus 9, and they dipped down to plus four. Now they're back up to plus five. So take the favorite underdog stats with a little bit of grain of salt in this one. In the end, though, it's hard to uh, pick for Toronto to win. They've just been playing so poorly lately. So I do like the Mariners to win this one, and I like a higher scoring game going over the line. The last game we want to look at is the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox. In this classic AL East battle, the Yankees come into play burning hot, winners of their last two and four out of their last six. While the Red Sox are ice cold down, they have lost their last three and are just two and four over their last six. The pitching matchup is James Italian for the Yankees versus Nick Pavetta for the Red Sox. Italian is nine and two with a 3.63 ERA and a great bet at plus $630. While Pavetta is having a solid season as well, he is eight and six with a 3.68 ERA, but over his last three starts, he's over three of the 10.45 ERA and has been a poor bet at minus $70. If you look at the power ranking indicator, you notice that the Yankees are up at plus 22, while the Red Sox, they were at 27, and they dipped just over the last couple of days to plus 10. The score predictor has the Yankees in a 10-5 to 5, 
uh, blowout win, really, uh, with confidence of prediction of 63%. The over-under is showing that the teams have both been involved in games over the line in, uh, recently, but overall over the last six, not as much, kind of a 50-50 there. So I think I would probably avoid the over-under bet because the inconsistency is there. Um, as far as who is going to win the game? Let's take a, the volat take a look at the volatility oscillator first. You can see the consistency factor. Look at the Yankees, plus 29. They've been very stable. They have pretty much done as expected, while the Red Sox are moderately stable at plus 8. In the end, I like the Yankees. I think the Yankees definitely will come away with the win in this one, but I would avoid the over-under bet. So there you have it. Those are the games for July 10th in Major League Baseball. Happy betting, and we will see you next time.